Hi everyone, Darren from Draytech Australia in New Zealand. One of the most common inquiries we receive is, I'd like a router to connect to the NBN. Which one do you recommend? The first problem with that question is that the NBN isn't just the NBN. It's actually seven physically different types of internet services using different technologies grouped under one umbrella called the NBN Multi-Technology Mix or MTM. Each technology uses a different type of cable and broadband internet technology for at least part of the distance to connect a house to the national broadband network. Even wireless and satellite connections might be the case for many people. With all types of NBN, your ISP might include a router, also known as a gateway with the service, but it can be replaced by another router if it doesn't meet your needs. For example, if you need business class features such as VPN, firewall security, user management, advanced content filtering, or highly configurable QoS quality of service. In this video, we'll take a look at the NBN multi-technology mix and go through the different routers needed to suit each different type of NBN connection, should the ISP's included router not meet your needs. Fibre to the premises, or FTTP, has optic fibre going all the way up to a home or office to connect to the NBN. New Zealand has UFB, ultra-fast broadband, which is also a fibre to the premises type connection. In Australia, NBN Co will install a utility box on the wall outside the premises, while inside gets an NBN connection box and a backup battery to keep the phone going for a period of time in the event of a blackout. For this type of connection, any router with an Ethernet WAN port can be used. An Ethernet WAN port looks like this, also known as an RJ45 port, not to be confused with the LAN ports, which look the same but serve a different purpose. A WAN port is used to connect a router to the internet, while LAN ports are used to connect your computers and other devices on your local area network to the router. A couple of great examples of Draytech routers with Ethernet WAN ports are the Vigor 2133 series and the Vigor 2926 series. I'll include links to these in the description below for more information. Fibre to the Curb, or FTTC, has fibre going almost all the way to the premises, but it stops just short in a pit in the street, just outside located less than 200 metres away. Incidentally, that 200 metres also includes the cabling inside the premises. Inside the pit, a device called a DPU, or distribution point unit, is installed, and the last few metres up to the house is over the existing copper phone line using VDSL2 technology at the moment, but it may be upgraded eventually to an even faster DSL technology called GFAST. VDSL stands for Very High Speed Digital Subscriber Line, which is a similar technology to ADSL or Asymmetric Digital Subscriber Line, but faster over shorter distances up to about 1.6 kilometres from the final destination. But the closer it is, the faster it goes. Each DPU can connect up to four houses to the NBN, but it needs power to do its thing, and it gets that from inside one of the houses over the same copper cable. Inside the house, the NBN connection box is connected to an existing or maybe a new RJ11 socket. The NBN connection box in this case is a special modem that can support the VDSL2 connection as well as the power over ethernet technology needed to send power down to the DPU in the street. That power over ethernet WAN requirement makes it tricky to replace with another product but there's no need to in this case. The modem, called a Network Connection Device, or NCD, remains the property of NBN Co and any router with an Ethernet WAN port, like the Vigor 2952 series, for example, can be used to connect to it. I'll include a link to the Vigor 2952 series product page in the description below for more information. Fibre to the Node, or FTTN, is probably the most common type of NBN service. In this case, the optic fibre runs up to a point within 1.5 kilometres or so of the premises, remember our 1.6 kilometre limit, and then the last bit, often referred to as the last mile, is run over the existing copper cable. The nodes, where the cable changes from optic fibre to copper, are inside cabinets like this one, which you'll find alongside streets. To get the internet to the houses from here, VDSL technology is employed. These cabinets also usually have a bank of batteries down the bottom to keep everyone's phones going in the event of a blackout. FTTB, or fibre to the building, often called fibre to the basement, is much the same as fibre to the node, except in this case the node will be found in the communications room of a high-rise or a block of units like this one. So we have optic fibre to the comms room, which is usually in the basement, and then from there up to each unit is copper cable, again using VDSL, the same as fibre to the node. 
Inside the premises for both fibre to the node and fibre to the building, the NBN connection comes out of an existing or a brand new RJ11 phone socket. In these cases, a replacement router will need to have a built-in VDSL modem to support it, like the Dratec Vigor 130, which also has bridging mode so it can be used to connect VDSL to a more advanced router or firewall product that doesn't have its own built-in VDSL modem. The Dratec Vigor 2762 series and the Vigor 2862 series also have built-in VDSL2 modems to work with fibre to the node or fibre to the building connections. These two series are a great choice if you're not sure which type of NBN you have or you might have to move house one day and move to an area with a different type of NBN. They also feature Ethernet WAN ports so they can be used with all types of NBN connections. Links to product pages in the description below. HFC Hybrid Fibre Coaxial. In this case, the last mile is the same coaxial cable used by the cable TV network. You'll find this cable in most capital cities strung from pole to pole as it is here, but it can also be underground in some cases. Outside the building, you'll find one of these boxes which has an isolator inside it. The isolator prevents any power that might get into the system from a house from entering the cable network. It doesn't offer any real lightning or surge protection for the house, but those events are fairly rare. Inside we have the NBN connection box, which is a special type of modem in this case, similar to a cable modem, which will be installed in the premises by an approved NBN installer, and it can be connected to any router with an Ethernet WAN port. A couple of great Dratec routers with Ethernet WAN ports and business class features are the Vigor 2960 and the Vigor 3220. Once again, I'll include links below to their product pages. The last types of NBN are fixed wireless and satellite connections, which we can kind of bundle together because there's no physical cable connecting the last mile to the NBN. In this case, we use wireless or satellite technologies to create that final link. The fixed wireless will have an optic fiber cable running up to a transmission tower like this one, which can be up to 14 kilometers from a customer's premises. From here to the houses, it uses radio waves in the LTE spectrum. You'll find fixed wireless used in areas where it's uneconomical to install optic fibre, such as out in the bush or in areas with difficult terrain or perhaps really long driveways such as acreage estates. For fixed wireless connections, an antenna will be installed outside the premises, which is connected to an NBN connection box inside, which can be connected to any router with an Ethernet WAN port. For SkyMuster, the radio signal is sent and received from the NBN to an orbiting satellite and then to and from the house. This is the go-to for remote locations outside the reach of other technologies, including Christmas Island all the way to Lord Howe and Norfolk Islands. SkyMuster was launched in October 2015 and became operational in April 2016. There's two satellites being used and each satellite provides a bandwidth of 80 gigabytes per second. On the house will be a satellite dish and inside an NBN connection box will be fitted. Once again, any router with an Ethernet WAN port can be used. One of Dratec's flagship business class routers featuring multiple Ethernet WAN ports is the Dratec Vigor 3900. I'll include a link to its product page in the description below. So, all you need to know is if your ISP supplied a router but it doesn't meet your needs and you have a fibre to the node or fibre to the building NBN connection, you need a router with a built-in VDSL modem. For all other types of NBN, fibre to the premises, fibre to the curb, hybrid fibre coaxial, fixed wireless or SkyMaster, you need a router with an Ethernet WAN port. I'll include links to all products mentioned in this video in the description below, separated into the VDSL2 and Ethernet WAN groups. I'll also include a link below to our blog article on this topic, which has a table showing which routers work with each type of NBN. Okay, for more information about Draytech products, please check out our website at www.draytech.com.au. If you have any questions, please comment below, or you can send us an email to sales at draytech.com.au, or give us a call on 02 9838 8899. Don't forget to like and subscribe below, and give the bell a click if you'd like a notification of new videos as we put them up. Thanks, and bye for now.